Hello, and welcome to the Getting Started with Informix HQ video. So in this demo, we're just going to walk through the process of getting Informix HQ started for the very first time. Informix HQ is now available as part of Informix 1410. So when you install Informix 1410, you will find an HQ directory right there within your Informixter. And inside the HQ directory will be two jar files for the Informix HQ agent and the server, and then two example properties files as well. And there's just two prerequisites um, for starting Informix HQ. You will need Java version eight or higher, and then you'll want to have one or more Informix database server instances already running, so 1210 or version 1410. Um, you'll want those running so that when you start Informix HQ, you have a database server you can actually connect the tool to. So let's jump right in to show you how to start Informix HQ. So I'm going to go to my command prompt and I am in my Informix or HQ directory and you'll see the four files that I mentioned, the two jar files for the agent and the server and then two example properties files. So you'll want to start the Informix HQ server first. The server is the heart of Informix HQ. It's the piece that runs the web UI, that runs the REST API that'll connect to your database servers. It runs, controls the monitoring profiles, the alerting profiles. It manages multiple database server instances. It's really the heart of Informix HQ. So that's the piece you wanna start first. Um, so that's that jar right here. To start the Informix HQ server, you'll need to create a server properties file. And we have this example properties file that you can use that references all the available properties, but you'll just want to end up creating your own properties file. And to start the server for the very first time, there is only one required property. And that's the initial admin password. So you just provide a password. Um, this password, um, when the Informix HQ server starts for the first time, it's going to create an admin user that will have system administrative privileges to Informix HQ and needs a password for that user. You only need this initial admin password in your server properties file the very first time you start it. Any subsequent times you start the server, you do not need this password. It's just on the first time initialization, so you can remove this property thereafter. Now that you have the server properties file created, you just need a simple Java command to start the Informix HQ server. So again, make sure you're, you're using Java 8. So you just run java-jar, provide the Informix HQ server jar file name, and then your server properties file name. And you'll see some messages about it, creating the initial admin user and initializing the schema, etc. Um, and then you'll eventually see a message that it configured the server for HTTP on port 8080. So once you see that message, you can switch over to your browser and navigate to that URL. So localhost 8080. And you'll see Informix HQ is up and running. So to log in, you use the username admin and you provide the password you put in your properties file. And you see I'm logged in. So Informix HQ is up and running. Now when you log in for this first time, you're gonna see zero servers, zero groups. So probably your first task is going to be to add your server or multiple database servers. We have the ability to add groups that have many database servers. You might wanna group them in a certain way to make them easy to manage. For the simplicity of this demo, I'm just gonna skip groups and go directly to adding a server. So I just click add server and then I enter information about my database server. The server name is really any alias that you like. It's just how that server is gonna be referred to in the UI. Provide the host name, the port, and then you're asked to provide two sets of credentials. One is monitoring credentials, so the credentials Informix HQ is going to use to monitor your database server, or when you're using the UI, when um, various pages in the UI get information from the database server, it will use these monitoring credentials. This user does not need 
and Formix level privileges. So you can add any user that you want that has basically connect access to sysadmin. And then you provide a set of admin credentials. So if you want Informix HQ to be able to administer your server, or you want to connect an agent and be able to deploy the agent automatically, you will want to provide administrative credentials. That should be Informix user or someone with similar privileges. It's going to need access to this admin database and to be able to run admin API commands. So Informix or a similarly privileged DBSA type user. All right, when you click submit, it will save the server's information and it'll take you to that server's dashboard. So I can see that it connected to my server. Um, Formix HQ now knows the server's online and it shows me some high level information about that server, storage performance, threads, sessions, etc. From this point, the UI is connected to my demo server instance and I can click around the various pages, configuration, performance, etc. Um, and use the tool to view information about my database server or even perform administrative actions. But if I go back to the dashboard, you'll notice that it says the agent is offline. So to fully take advantage of Informix HQ's monitoring capabilities, you need to connect an agent. And the agent is the process that's going to be running 24 seven and monitoring your database server, collecting data about it, sending data to the Informix HQ server if there are alerting conditions that you've configured to ensure that you're notified if anything goes wrong. So as part of this getting started video, it's important to go through the process of starting the agent. So the first step in starting the agent is to go back to your setup page and go to the agent tab. So as I mentioned, the agent's the one that collects monitoring data and so you need to configure a repository database where the agent stores the monitoring data. So to find the repository database, you use this select. This will pop up and list all of the database servers you defined in the tool. So the prerequisite is that you have to have defined your repository database server, added it to the tool. So in this case, I just have my demo server, so I will be storing my, my monitoring data local in the same instance I'm monitoring, which is good enough for this demo. Um, a lot of you may want to set up a central repository, so you would just go through the process of adding that server first, and then you could select your central repository from this list. So I will select the demo server, and then I can select the database where the repository data is stored. So I'm going to choose this monitor DB that I've set up already. And then I've saved it. So now I've configured Informix HQ to know where the repository data for this particular demo database is going to go. So I can go to starting the agent. Informix HQ provides an automatic agent deployment button. So if I click this button, it'll use some default values. It'll use the admin credentials I provided, you SSH to my host machine, and copy over the agent jar. So you can use this automatic deployment if your agent jar is sitting right next to your Informix server jar file, like mine was since everything is in my Informix HQ directory. And if you have SSH on the target machine, you can use this deploy agent button. If you wanted to use different credentials or control what directory things get copied over to, you can click this configure button and override some of these properties. But I'm just gonna go with the default. So I click deploy agent. And now you can see my agent is online. So all Informix HQ did when I clicked that button is it opened an SSH connection to the host machine of my database server, local host in this instance, but in a lot of cases it would be a remote instance. It SSH'd the agent jar file there, it created an agent properties file and just used a Java command to start the agent. Um, if for some reason this didn't work, you can start the agent on the command line. It's the same process as for the Informix HQ server. You would create an agent properties file. That properties file just needs to know the host and port of your Informix HQ server. And then you just provide the server ID. Um, so in this case, you just check your setup page and this is server ID one. So if you put those three properties in an agent properties file, use the example one we provide as an example if you need it. Um, and then you can start the agent using a Java-jar command similar to starting the server. 
So that's just if for some reason the automatic deployment doesn't work or if you wanted to do this programmatically. But now if I go back to my demo server's dashboard, you can see that the agent is connected. So from this point, Informix HQ is fully set up. I've connected to a database server. I've connected an agent to my database server. So I can now go ahead and configure that agent to monitor my database server and to set up alerting. But we will cover those in a subsequent video. So I hope this was useful. If you want to find out more about setting up monitoring and alerting and other things about Informix HQ, do go ahead and check out the other videos in our channel. Thank you.